Hello YouTube friends. I want to tell you a story about this quilt behind me. Um, a while ago when I was doing one of the drawer tidying outs I found these fat quarters that I bought a few years ago. Uh, 2016 in fact. And I came up with this idea and I'm going to tell you about it now and I'll tell you what we did, me and my mum. Um, my mum was an amazing quilter. She made so many quilts, oh, 150 quilts more probably, for all sorts of people. She would just have to hear that her next door neighbours, dentists, mechanics, plumbers, daughter was having a baby and she would make a quilt. <laughs> she was lovely like that, very, very generous, never sold them, always just gave them freely away. So one Mother's Day, that Mother's Day, 2016, on Mother's Day, I went to see her um, and I took with me two bundles of fat quarters. Now the first bundle was in all the colours that I thought she would really like. Big bundle, I haven't got any of those left, I've used them all. So the first bundle was all her colours, which are all sort of purples and pinks and lilacs and lavenders. And I said, there you are, Mum. Uh, what do you think of them? She said, oh, they're beautiful. And there were about five or six fat quarter bundles. They're lovely, she said. I said, well, you can't have those. You give those back to me. What? She said, so she she gave me the, them back. And I said, and then I said, what do you think about these then? Now, my mum has a lifelong, had a lifelong dislike of green for some reason. And these are all the colours in this bundle that I really liked. And I said, there you are, you can have this little pile of fat quarters. And there were about six like this. And her face fell. Why, why, did, why was I taking the nice ones away and giving her these that she didn't like? I said, because now I'm going to make a quilt for you using those. And you're going to make a quilt for me using these. And then on your birthday, which was in July, we're going to swap them. And that's exactly what we did. So I gave her some guidelines as to, you know, it shouldn't be massive, just about five foot square, which is nice to put over the back of a sofa or something, isn't it? And so I came home and I made the one that I made for her. And she beavered away and made this here. And she hand, quilt, hand quilted everything. She wouldn't have had any truck with this machine quilting that I've been doing lately. <laughs> but this one's all hand quilted. It's uh, here it is. It's it's rectangular rather than square. It's fine. Uh, what did she put on the back? Oh, that's right. I gave her the, the fabric to put on the back, some green because I love green. And I'm sure she really didn't enjoy making it all that much. <laughs> but she did. And on her birthday, I went to see her and we swapped quilts. So I'm going to show you the one that I made for her now. I used a pattern called Trip Around the World, which is a block that I'm going to show you how to make as part of this little chat. Mum just, what did she do? Well, she did that, which I love. It's absolutely lovely. And it sits over the sofa in the sitting room, which is my sitting room is very, very green. And it sits on the back of the sofa. OK, then, so I'm going to get the one I made for her out and I'll put some pictures in here of me uh, and my mum and the quilts. It was a good idea. And, and I think if you've got a friend or a sister or a mum or somebody who really loves to quilt as much as you do, it's a good present because you get to make something for them. All the time I was making it, I was thinking about her and whether she'd like it or not. She did. She really liked it. Uh, so I'm going to uh, I'll, uh, what I'll do is I think. I'll put it out on the bed upstairs because I've got another trip around the world quilt upstairs that I'll show you at the same time. And then we'll get on and we'll make a trip around the world block. And uh, that'll be good fun. OK, we'll do that then. I'll see you upstairs in a minute. This then is the quilt I made for mum. These are all the colours that I knew she would like. All these um, lilacs and purples. and They weren't my taste. It's a little bit too insipid for me. But this is the one I made for her and she loved it. And then I've, sh I've brought this up here to show you because this on the wall here is another trip around the world quilt. We're getting a bit closer. I made this one using all K facet fabrics. I'm a big fan of him. <laughs> and so we'll look at closely at the fabrics here. And then this trip around the world block 
gives you this fantastic um, square in a square kind of design here and with mum's quilt so that was lots of them all put side by side and with mum's quilt it was one big huge trip around the world with how big were the squares about four, four and a half five inches maybe after my mum died my dad gave me this quilt back again so it's kind of nice to have this as a reminder come on we'll go and make a trip around the world block really easy so I'm going to make one trip around the world block in order to make them match up you need to make four really because they would all uh, come together like the quilt that you saw upstairs but I'm just going to make one so that you can see how uh, I do it uh, there's probably other ways of doing it out there but this one works really well for me and this is a very good use of jelly roll strips uh, these are two and a half inches wide and as long as the width of fabric and uh, so yeah they do make uh, very good use of those strips you can make them thinner and like I did with my mum's you can make them thicker but you have to scale everything up and everything down okay so we're just going to look at these jelly roll strips here then so I've laid them out here uh, these are pink and purple so I've done light dark light dark light dark and the important thing to remember because of what we're going to do in a minute is that the last one and the first one should be contrasting unless you don't mind uh, what goes next to each other but for me now I'm doing this light dark light dark light dark and I need that dark one there to have a light one at this end you'll see why in a minute so these jelly roll strips then are two and a half inches wide and I'm going to cut them well 16 inches but a little bit bigger 17 inches I'm going to cut them off at 17 inches so let's get uh, 17 inches there which is there I'm just going to do this quite roughly so I'm going to cut that I wonder can you see what I'm doing okay so so this then is 16 inches tiny bit more maybe and I'm going to cut that now all those pieces there now if you were making a quilt like this you could then go on and cut these pieces 16 and so on that's what I did when I made the uh, big K for set one but for now I'm just showing you how to make one trip around the world block there they all are look all beautifully light dark light dark and I'm going to sew them together like that with a quarter inch seam so let's do that now I'm going to use my quarter inch foot which has got this lovely little guide on it and which really helps me to sew a quarter inch really accurately so I'm just going to put that on there like so and then stitch these together uh, for those of you who don't like the funky music look away now or turn your volume down <laughs> So there's our light dark light dark in a row of six and now I'm going to press them with all the seams going in one direction. So now that we've done that we're going to do something a little bit different not what you would expect to do with a quilt block let's go and do that now so there's our six strips sewn together and instead of now cutting those up what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew them together 
I'm going to sew this dark to this light here to make a tube. So I'll just line them all up really carefully and then I'm going to make a tube. So once you've got the tube made of all six uh, connected together, first thing I'm going to do is just tidy up the end here. Make that nice and tidy. And then we're going to cut it however wide your strips are you're going to cut this into the same size. So if this was a four inch strip or a one inch strip, you would cut this the same size. These are two and a half inches. So I'm going to cut these at two and a half inches, which is exactly there. I tend to use the marks on my ruler rather than the marks on my cutting mat. It's just habit, I guess. I was doing it the other day and I was using the mat. It was working fine. So we're going to cut a two and a half inch strip from this whole tube now. So that's what I'm going to do. So here are my six pieces of tube. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is unpick one of the seams. So keep them all in order. So I'm going to unpick one seam. I'm just going to take my stitch ripper and unpick one seam. Now, I've made a few trip around the world quilts. <laughs> and to begin with, when I haven't made one for a bit, I've got to try and remember what order to do the unpicking in. So I've unpicked the first one there. On the second one, I've got that, I unpicked that row there, I've got to unpick the row below. So I'll open that up and I'm going to unpick the row below on all six of them so that they are now a strip with a different square at the top and bottom. All will become apparent in a minute. So I'm opening that out. In order to remember which one it is, I've got to lay it out like this. I get a little bit challenged by this. So if I lay it out like this and I can tell I've opened that one and then the second one I've opened this one. And if I look at this one, I know I've got to open this one. You're probably less challenged by this stuff than I am, but I found myself getting into a proper mess with this <laughs> when I first started doing it. I've made another trip around the world quilt out of Liberty fabric and I'm going to be talking to you about Liberty fabric soon. I've got a big Liberty project coming up. So that one is, so that was there, that one there and this one here. So the next one I need to unpick on this one is the bottom one. I hope you can see okay. Shall I go back overhead again or are you managing to see all right? And keep them in the right order because this is how we get the pattern evolving. Okay, so there's two more to do. And that's this one here. And then finally, it's this one here. You can number them if you like with a, a pencil, you know, like a, a fabric pencil. You can write one, two, three, four, five, six on each of the squares if that would help you. So I've unpicked all the way round like that now. And now we're going to take this over to the ironing board and I'll show you how the whole thing comes together now. So I'm going to take the first one and open it up. And there's only one seam that isn't pressed, isn't there? I'm going to press that one. But then this time 
I'm actually going to press the seams. Those seams are going down. I want these seams to go up now. So I'm kind of repressing these seams upwards so that the seams will nest when I want them to. So that one is there. The seams are going down. This one's got the seams going up there. This next one here will have the seams going down. So I only really need to press that one. Press that as well. This next one, I need this to press the seams up. This one, I open this one out and I need to press the seams going down. Oh, they are going down, beautiful. And the last one, let's check where this is going going there and I need the seams pressed going up so that they will nest beautifully. Okay, so you can see, can't you, that by undoing the seams like I have, I've got this lovely checkerboard appearance <laughs> and I'm going to sew those together now to create one block. Let's do that. In order to avoid getting into a muddle, I'm going to write one to six on a bit of paper and pin it to each one. Of these strips because unless you're paying close attention you can get yourself into a bit of a muddle with how these sew together. So they're all numbered now so I can sew five to six here and all the seams will nest now because I've pressed them all in the right direction which will help reduce the bulk around the area of the join which is a good thing. So we can take the numbers out now. We don't need those anymore. They've served their purpose. but they have kept everything beautifully lined up. So we'll give it a final press. We'll just check on the back that all our seams have nested and they have. And so we'll just give it one final press now. And there's our trip around the world block. Now that's one block. If you were to make four and put them together, then you would have a diamond shape where they all came together. But there is one thing to be aware of when you're doing that. Uh, the first time I did a trip around the world quilt, I put them all up on the, it was that one I showed you upstairs. I put them all up on the board. And what happens when you bring four blocks together is that you get four of this one all coming together. Now that, you might actually like that. You might like to have a, like a, 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 a bigger square in the middle of your block, but I didn't. So I made 
a strip of two inch squares so that I could join them together. You'll see yourselves if you ever make one of these exactly what it is you have to do. But there it is. It's easy, isn't it? <laughs> it's easy. So I hope you have a go at making the trip around the world block. I've got another block that I'm going to show you soon, which is all to do with the curtains that I made, because that's a block called postage stamp, which is again, small squares. These are very organized squares. I'll show you how to do very, very scrappy squares on another block uh, called the postage stamp block. But for now, for all you quilty friends out there, that's a trip around the world. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.